Welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock development tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over resource packs, aka how to turn dirt into this. Granted, purple dirt isn't necessarily super useful, but this is going to go over the technical aspects of how to do this. The rest of the art is on you. Keep in mind too that as we covered in the first video, the getting started, which if you haven't seen, you should probably go check it out first, it covers the basics. This is a resource pack and not a behavior pack. Minecraft does split those two things into two separate concepts. One that just changes how the game appears and one that changes how the game behaves. Easy enough to remember. With that in mind, let's get started. Today you're gonna learn how resource packs are created how to make a manifest file, which is very important, how custom textures are loaded into Minecraft, and the concept of pack stacking. So first thing is first, let's go ahead and build the resource pack. To build a resource pack, you're gonna have to put it in a proper file structure, similar to what we explained in video one. So let's go ahead and go to our com.mojang folder, as we discussed, we got development resource packs, and we're gonna head in there and create a new folder. This is gonna be the texture pack folder that you're gonna be using for the rest of this tutorial. Now, this particular name here doesn't matter, so we're just gonna call it Pat's Tutorial Resource Pack RP. I like to use underscores, I'd recommend doing it that way. I don't think you have to in this case, but it's very important that the rest of the folders are all done exactly how they appear here. And that's because Minecraft is going to be searching for these folders because of the way that it loads things into the game. So open up your new folder and let's go ahead and create a new folder again called textures. This one has to be named exactly that. Open that up and we're going to create another new folder called blocks. Now inside of here, as you can imagine, you're gonna have to put in the dirt.png file. Now you can make one of these yourself or you can use the one that I provide in the description below. As far as making a texture for Minecraft, uh, one of the ways to do it, I use Adobe Photoshop. If you don't have access to that, use your favorite image editing program. And all you need to do is create a 16 by 16 grid in this case, I like to use the pencil tool because you can draw on pixels as he does not do that. You had to set it to one pixel and then you can actually change each one of these pixels individually. So that gives you a lot of opportunity to do whatever you want and this will become your dirt texture. So for this tutorial here, we're going to be turning this purple just so it's really obvious that this isn't dirt anymore and I actually could just make it a full rectangle but I want it to be slightly more interesting so we're just gonna move it to purple like that it's gonna maintain the dirt texture to it but be purple it's neat because in bedrock edition certain textures like dirt are actually rotated randomly so keeping it cool like that is actually gonna work in our favor so I'm gonna save dirt.png in our resource packs, textures, blocks folder right there. This is a good time to mention that the Minecraft textures are actually available. The, the default resource pack is made available by Microsoft. I'm gonna have a link to that as well down there in the description so that you have a good place to start. That way you can go into that textures blocks and you have pretty much access to all of the things in the game so that you have something to work off of honestly that might be the most helpful part of this entire video but there's still more technical things you have to do to get this to work so now that we have the dirt.png texture we're gonna have to create the manifest file so head back to your development folder and go to just open it up at its root right here we're gonna have to create the manifest.json file this is important. Uh, you need to make sure that the extension is JSON, J-S-O-N. It's gonna probably warn you and that's a good thing. If you can't see the file extensions, then you need to go to view and show 
file name extensions. We did cover that in the first video, but I'm sure some of you are going to be here without that and did not heed my warning to go back. So <laughs> do that and turn on hidden items uh, and make sure that it's manifest.json. Then you can open it up with Visual Studio Code as we covered. And we're going to have those plugins installed already as well, the extensions that can handle it, which is why I put RP in my name so that we can deal with that. Uh, it's the same way, block exceptions, extension pack that we installed. So in here, you're going to need a description, a name, a UUID, a version, a minimum engine version. And uh, that's all a lot of text. So basically, I'm going to put all this down in the description below so that you can easily copy and paste it. And then it's going to end up looking like this. So after you paste it in, you're going to have this information just like this. Uh, so we're going to start with the description. This is in the header module. If you've never used JSON, it's just a pretty easy way to pack various amounts of information. So right, like right now, you can see between the braces, this is one section. Format version is in quotes with a colon followed by the value. And this is going to be really important if you go into behavior packs not so important if you're just going to be doing texture packs so we'll start in the header module with the description this is the description of your pack so this is just going to be a tutorial with pat about some dirt and then we're going to have the name of the texture pack you know pat's dirt tutorial pack now i also usually copy this description down here into the second one it's not currently used it's kind of just for you um the type section is going to simply be resources that's what we're making inside of this module section and now we need to get to the uuid this is important and a very important note that you might miss so pay attention is that you need a different UUID in the header and in the module section. So one here and one here. This is important because a behavior pack may link to a texture pack, but they need to have separate UUIDs. So that there's one that links and then one that identifies it separately. So to get that, the easiest way is to go to UUID generator.net. That's gonna take you here. You can simply hit the copy button, copy and paste, that into the one then generate a new one with refresh copy paste into here boom save this we can close that and head back to our folder and make sure the manifest.json is in the root level very important okay with all of that underway we should be able to start minecraft because we've put this in the com.mojang development resource packs folder. This should be immediately available to us when we open the game. If it's not showing up, go back and follow everything we've done. Make sure you do it step by step. If you have any problems, leave a comment below. Head into your settings, go into global resources. Look at that. Pat's dirt tutorial pack. A tutorial with Pat about some dirt. There we go. I'm going to activate that so that it's active. And then we're going to head into a world. I'm going to create a new world for this. Might as well, right? So I am in a <laughs> ray tracing world right now with my own ray tracing texture pack, which if you haven't seen, I am going to be having that available soon. If you're interested in getting it, leave a comment on this video and I'll let you know where you can find it. Look at these dirt particles coming out when I break this grass. They actually use the dirt texture. So boom, if you, uh, if you break some grass and look at the dirt underneath, we have purple dirt, just like that. And the reason why this works in a ray tracing world and why I left it like this is to explain that concept of pack stacking. Right now it's missing its MER texture. Oh, and the grass just grew back. So as you can see, grass is a separate deal from dirt and this is not a ray traced pack here. So it's really shiny because it needs more layers to define height maps and specularity, which I'm also going to be covering in a different video. So make sure you look out for that if you're interested in making ray trace capable, ray tracing enabled resource packs. But look at that dirt is in our hand being purple and we can place it down and, and it's totally working just like that. So like I said, purple dirt isn't necessarily useful, but you know what is useful? Being able to make whatever the heck you want and putting it in the game. That's useful. 
I'm also going to make videos going over how to add custom blocks into the game, including custom textures on those custom blocks. And then you could also make those blocks do things. Uh, there's a lot you can do in this game. And it's so exciting. So keep that in mind. Just before I go, we'll show you what it looks like in non-ray traced. This is kind of more what you're expecting. And it's just purple. And look, when I run on grass, even those particles are purple because it uses that dirt texture again. So, <laughs> it's really interesting. Check that out. Guys, if this video helped you, please hit subscribe. It helps my channel so much. I know everybody says that, and it's because it's freaking true. So, if you like Minecraft Bedrock and you like what I'm doing here, hit subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment telling me how much you like what I'm doing or what parts were helpful, what parts aren't helpful, so that I can do even better videos for you in the future. I appreciate it. Happy Minecraft development, and I'll see you in the next one with behavior packs. Or whichever one you choose to watch.